Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, sir, my question is addressed to the Honorable Attorney General, Minister of Agro-Industry and Food Security. Whether in regard to the project for the refurbishment and upgrading of the Splash and Fun Leisure Park at a cost of over 380 million rupees, as at to date, he will A, for the benefit of the House, obtain from the Sugar Investment Trust information from Sugar Investment Trust Leisure information as to 1. The expected completion date thereof, indicating the quantum of the funds required for completion. 2. If any market research was effected prior to the start of the project, and if so, by whom? And B. State if he will obtain and table a copy of the report of the internal auditor following the Board of Directors meeting of 2nd June 2021, and C. State whether any matter has been referred to the police for inquiry. Yes, Mr. Speaker, sir. The Sugar Investment Trust is established under Section 3 of the Sugar Industry Efficiency Act. The trust is a body corporate, and for the purposes of the Companies Act, the SIT is considered as a company. The objects of the trust are set out in Section 4 of the Sugar Industry Efficiency Act. It may, therefore, invest inter alia in, I quote, leisure, entertainment, and gaming. As such, the board of the SIT, in October 1999, set up a subsidiary as a private company, namely SIT Leisure Limited, for the purpose of investment in the then Belmar Water Park, constructed in the year 2000, and which opened on 4th December 2000. The Belmore Water Park was rebranded as the Splash and Fun Leisure Park in 2019. Mr. Speaker, sir, with regard to the refurbishment, the refurbishment started in 2018 for an estimated cost of 350 million rupees. Refurbishment was completed in 2019, except for one item, namely the boomerangu, which has been completed up to 68% only, as the park was closed due to COVID-19 pandemic from 19 March 2020 to 15 October 2020, and from 15 March 2021 to 29 October 2021 to 29th January 2022. I am informed that the board is contemplating to complete the boomerangu uh, item of the refurbishment subject to availability of funds. With regard to the market research, Mr. Speaker, sir, I am informed that a business review was undertaken by firm PwC in 2016 for the SIT and its subsidiaries. I am further informed that for the water park project specifically, a business review was carried out by firm KPMG. With regard, Mr. Speaker, sir, to the internal auditor, report, I am informed that following a board meeting of the SIT Leisure Limited held on 2nd of June 2021, the board members requested the internal auditor to prepare a comprehensive report on the 350 million rupees spent on the refurbishment of the park and the construction of the Boomerangu. I am informed that the report of the internal auditor was submitted to the board of SIT Leisure Limited on 23rd of March, 
2022. This report is still being examined by the board. I am further informed, Mr. Speaker, sir, that there is not only one internal auditor's report, but other connected internal auditor report on the refurbishment. All these reports are also being examined by the board. I wish to reiterate, Mr. Speaker, sir, that SIT Leisure Limited is a private company, as I have explained earlier. Mr. Speaker, sir, with regard to the question of whether to table the internal auditor report. Uh, I, I beg your pardon, Mr. Speaker, sir. With regard to the police inquiry, I am informed by the Commissioner of Police that as at date, no case has been reported to the police for inquiry in connection with the refurbishment and upgrading of the leisure park. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, with regard to whether the report of the internal auditor should be tabled in the House, I wish to inform the House that the report has not yet been officially submitted to my ministry. I am also informed that the Independent Commission Against Corruption is investigating in this case, and therefore, by virtue of Section 81 of the Prevention of Corruption Act, the said investigation and all information surrounding it is confidential. May I ask Honourable Minister, I thank him for his concise reply. May I ask Honourable Minister concerning the famous Boomerango, which has been completed about two-thirds for a total cost of 76 million rupees, I'm sure he well knows. Needs maybe 35, 50 million rupees more to complete. It is currently an ISO. I can submit photos. Is the minister honestly telling the House that he is not sure whether the 76 million rupees are a project cost 76 million to date is going to be completed, or otherwise the money is just going to be thrown down the drain? Because he said that it is subject to available funds. The situation, Mr. Speaker, sir, of the SIT Leisure Limited, as I said, is a private company which is governed by its board of directors. I do not have ministerial responsibility on the way the company is being managed by the board of directors. However, in the spirit of transparency, what I can share with the House is that, I, as far as I am informed, the business plan was that revenue would have been generated from the operation of the park. That revenue would have funded the remaining part of the refurbishment project. As I said, the park had to be closed, not on one, but on three occasions. Let me give the dates again. 19 March 2020, after the detection of the first COVID cases. And then it was, the park was reopened in October 2020. However, it was again closed in March 2021, following the second lockdown. And it was reopened on 30th October 2021. And then came November 2021 with Omicron. It was closed again. The park has reopened. The figures, as far as I am informed, show that when the park is in operation, it generates sufficient revenue. Now, when will the park operate fully, 100%? I cannot say, because the situation is very volatile. Speaker. So the park, the boomerang was meant to be completed in December 2019, three months before the first lockdown. The amount spent was 76 million rupees and has been stopped because of financial constraints. Is it seriously telling us that the future of a project having cost 76 million rupees is solely reliant on this SIT being able to generate some funds from what has been historically a loss-making uh, uh, concern, the water park. Otherwise, the money will just go down the drain. If, if the Honorable Leader of Opposition, Mr. Speaker, says suggesting that there has been some mismanagement, then the Board of Directors will have to take its responsibility. As I have mentioned, the Board has already asked, it is the Board which asked for the internal auditor report, they are still examining, not one, but I'm informed, 
There are other internal auditor reports as well. So I will say let the board of directors shoulder their responsibility. And if there has been, in case there has been mismanagement, the board will know what to do. Okay, I'd like to remind the minister that, that there is a PS of his ministry and also a PAS of his ministry who has historically sat on this board, on these boards, and therefore his ministry should have all the historical information necessary for him to be apprised on what is happening, and I'm surprised that his ministry says they don't know what is happening. Now, Mr. Speaker, I visited the park. The park has its stand, Mr. Speaker. The boomerango is unfinished. The bumper car is out of order, needs 20 million rupees. The 7D cinema needs another 14 or 15 million rupees to be, to be put in order. There's a VR games not working. The carousel is not working. The pirate boat, or the recently installed, is totally rested. 400 million rupees, Mr. Speaker, nearly has been spent. You can't see anything for that money that has been spent. I'm just asking the minister whether the money has not been embezzled, right, left, and center, and this is why I'm asking for a police inquiry, because there's nothing to show for nearly 400 million rupees of, of spent, funds spent. Yeah. I know the Honourable Leader of Opposition visited the park on Friday. I thought it was on Friday, but never mind. Uh, I had the occasion of visiting the park in October 2020, but not recently. Should, as I said, what, what the Leader of Opposition is asking is for, is for a police inquiry, but as I have informed the House, there is an ongoing investigation by the ICAC, I don't want to say more. Uh, what, what I can also say is that this is probably precisely why the board has asked the internal auditor to produce a, a report on the re refurbishment. So let, let the board examine that uh, internal auditor report and let also the ICAC pursue its investigation. There's at least 100 million rupees more required. And I'm going to ask the Honourable Minister whether he's going to put that money into the water park without this time having a proper market research. Because as everybody knows, a business review is not a market research. And the water park has historically been losing money. Someone decides to put 400 million rupees or more in a project and does not do a market research to see whether there is any chance of it making money. The, we are not, let it be clear. We are not talking of public funds here. The SIT Leisure Limited is a private company. The water park refurbishment project has, if I'm not mistaken, 80% um, 80, 80%, 79 or 80% of debt financing from bank and proprietary funds for 19 or 20%. We're not talking of public funds. Let there be no confusion about that. Furthermore, government is not injecting any public funds in, in the refurbishment project. Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Minister has, this has historically been the PS of the Ministry of Agriculture and the DPS on that board because there happens to be 55,000 chip planters who are shareholders in that company following an act of parliament passed in this house. If the minister is going to wash his hands entirely of the issue, then why have the PS and the DPS of his ministry historically sat on this board? And I can give their names if you want. Yes, you're correct to say that uh, the Chiplantier are represented on the board of directors. This is clearly spelled out in the Sugar Industry Efficiency Act uh, in Section 5, which lists down the composition of the Board of Directors. And in fact, when you look at Section 5 of the Sugar Industry Efficiency Act, the Board of the SIT consists of nine directors, Mr. Speaker, sir, out of those, out of whom only three are appointed by the Minister. The majority of directors, that is six, are appointed by the Assembly of Delegates, that is, those who are elected by the Chiplantier, 
and who are delegated, and they are from various um, sectors. Uh, these, as uh, this assembly of delegates is composed of delegates from the four factory areas. Six representatives from each of the four makes 24 assembly of delegates. It is wrong to believe that government has a majority on the board of the SIT. It has never been the case. The majority of six over nine directors composed of the representative of the delegates who are elected. That should be very clear in the minds of one and all. So speaker, it is also clear that de facto, the PS and the DPS of the ministry on that board, it is the ministry and the ministers from then on, from the past, who have controlled that board. I'm going to ask the Honorable Minister. He, he's, I'm surprised that he says that he has not read a copy of the internal audit report. Does he, he, will he inform himself, in fact, Mr. Speaker, will he check and see whether this internal audit report doesn't say that suppliers to SIT have been paid millions of rupees, in fact, 27, 22.7 million rupees, without any tender? Will you be surprised to say that amounts, large amounts, millions, have been paid to local contractors without board approval? In fact, Mr. Speaker, 3.5 million rupees were spent on accommodation, food and drinks and entertainment, 3.5 million rupees for foreign visitors. And in fact, Mr. Speaker, will you also check whether, in fact, the internal auditor doesn't say that 2.7 million rupees was paid to a contracting, although should have been paid to a contracting company, but was paid to a different individual, coming, Mr. Speaker, to a conclusion that, in fact, Mr. The, the SIT was, could have been accessory to a crime. All this is in the internal audit report, and he's saying it hasn't no, been given a copy of that report. You're making statements too long time. Make, put your question. What do you want from the minister? I asked. Okay. Minister? Let me come uh, on two points. First of all, on the control of the board. I reiterate what I have said earlier. Honorable Leader of Opposition keeps saying that the PS of the ministry used to sit on the board. Even if the PS used to sit on that board, I say again, the minister appoints only three persons over a total of nine directors on the board of the SIT. That does not give the minister or the ministry a control over a board of nine directors. That should be clear. Coming to the internal auditor report, let me say it again. It is the board members, the board members who ask for the internal auditor report. They must therefore have seen that there is a need for such an internal auditor report in the light of which the Honorable Leader of Opposition mentions a number of specific matters. I will not go into the specific matters because these reports, together with the other internal audit report, are being examined by the board. Responsibility will rest with directors. I have also disclosed that I am informed there is an ongoing ICAC investigation. I will leave it at that. I will say no more for reasons of confidentiality in section 81 of the POCA. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Minister knows full well that it is only the new board appointed by himself when he took office, following the then Minister, uh, Mr. Uh, Siratan. He, when he took office, it is then that the new board, seeing what has happened and the obvious embezzlement that has happened, appointed, uh, asked the internal auditor to do the work. It is the new board Mr. Speaker, not the old board. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to again ask the Honorable Minister to take cognizance of this internal audit report if he says he hasn't done so. Because he has the responsibility of 55,000 long-suffering tiplanteurs, artisans, pensioners. He has those people on his shoulder. We respect his decision to ask the internal auditor because this is his decision to our internal auditor to do the work. Reply. But he has to go further and look at the report and tell us what is going to be done following this report. 
So, Speaker, so I think I can only reiterate what I have said earlier. The work is being done. The report is here. I said, I did not say I haven't taken cognizance of it. The report has not been sent officially to my ministry because it is still being examined by the board. I can say that I have asked for it following the PNQ. I have also asked for other information surrounding this whole matter. This is how I come to know that there is on other internal audit report and the work is ongoing. It is premature to say what the investigation will reveal. I will say again, for reasons of confidentiality, I will say no more. This project was done against all the established procedures in government without plunder, without architect, without supervising engineer, with nothing, all done au petit bonheur. Would he explain Mr. Speaker, how come the then chairman of this company, SIT, SIT, Sri Investment Trust and SIT Leisure, one Mr. Pritam Budan, has, has supervised all this bloody mess. And he has been promoted, Mr. Speaker, to now becoming chairman of Landscope Limited, which has three times more assets to deplete than Sugar Investment Trust. How can this gentleman now, as we speak, be sitting as chairman of Landscope? Speaker, sir, I take objection to the fact that the Honorable Leader of Opposition now starts to mention somebody's name here who is not in the House, who has been... It is established parliamentary practice that we do not reveal the names of persons and for especially those who are not here to defend themselves. This is a cardinal rule of parliamentary practice. We should stick to this established practice. As I said again, if there has been mismanagement, the board will take its responsibility. And it is once again, we should not create the confusion in the mind of people that SIT is a department of government. SIT is not a department of government or a ministry for that matter. When the Honorable Leader of Opposition says the established procedures of government have not been followed, SIT is not a department of government. You should not create this confusion in the minds of people. Mr. Speaker, the Minister has to take, government has to take responsibility. They had a permanent secretary. I don't, I'm not giving the name of the poor lady. They have also another permanent secretary who replaced her. And a DPS sitting for all this time on these boards. And here we come, appointed by the minister then, the then minister himself. And here we come, and government washes itself completely of this fiasco, which is going to cost 400, in all, 480 million rupees to the spore planters of Mauritius. Now, I'm going to ask one thing to the honorable minister. The SIT leisure. Now it owes 600 million rupees. 600 million rupees of chiplanter money, artisan money, pensioners money. Your it question... owes that. Well, ask... No, you're making a long statement. Well, I'm going to ask Put a question, question in a moment. Directly. I'm going to ask as directly as I can. Now, Mr. Speaker, I want to ask the Honourable Minister, what does he propose to do? Is government going to refund the 600 million rupees that has been thrown down the drain by SIT, and it is all money belonging to poor people of this country. It is premature to say that money has been thrown down the drain, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, if, uh, if there is anything to be done, the board has to take its responsibility. And furthermore, talking of the uh, 55,000 chiplantaires and other shareholders, I will invite them through the Assembly of Delegates, which is uh, created under Section 6 of the SIE Act, to also take its responsibility. The Assembly of Delegates appoint, as I say, six directors out of nine on the board of the SIT. They have their say in the management of the company. They will also have to inquire, to ask questions in the appropriate forum. Uh, all through its history, the SIT, Sugar Industry Trust, created by government 
in this house has had problems. It used to have a huge turnover at 1.1, 1.2, 1.3 billion rupees. Now the latest turnover, 200 million rupees. It has dwindled, Mr. Speaker, like a pot de chagrin. So what I'm going to ask the Honourable Minister now is a matter of policy. Whether it isn't time for us to review the way that SIC is managed, the way that the directors are appointed, so that for this, for this huge amount of money that is still there, there is now a decent management and a decent board of directors, who, however they may be appointed professionally to manage money belonging to all these 55,000 people. Yes, as a matter of policy, Mr. Speaker, so I can say, yes, I have had consultations for some time now in my ministry. Collectively, we believe the time has come to review uh, the structure of SIT. Now, which form that will take, we are still having internal discussion. But there is indeed room for improvement after so many years, and especially after seeing uh, facts and figures based on historical uh, performance. Uh, so I am personally in favor of a review of the corporate structure. How will that happen, whether it's coming in a specific legislation or in the forthcoming finance bill? We are still having internal discussions. Mr. Speaker, last question, and then maybe my colleagues. I'm going to ask the minister. The previous minister who was sup supervised all this was promoted from Minister of Agriculture to Minister of Financial Services and good governance, s'il vous plaît. The previous uh, chairman, Pritam Budan, has been promoted to a much bigger company, Landscope Limited. Now, I've received many, also received many representations from chip planters, principally, artisans, etc., are calling this huge scandal Splashgate and saying, Mr. Speaker, that they request through me, through the opposition, a full commission on inquiry, not only on SIT Leisure Limited, it's, it's a petit marchand in this huge scandal, but on the whole forthcoming demise, I would say, of SIT itself, which, has, as I mentioned, has lost a huge amount of its profitability and is now paying a few cents only of dividends per share, a tenth of what it was paying before. Can we have a full-fledged commission of inquiry on SI, Sugar Investment Trust? I don't believe a commission of inquiry is called for, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, what can happen is the new delegates who have been recently elected, very recently, uh, towards the end of, uh, end of last year. So there is a whole new assembly of delegates who have been elected. Elections are held in all the factory areas every three years. So that new body of assembly of delegates can ask whatever questions they wish to in their assembly of delegates and through their elected directors on the board. As in so far as the internal audit is concerned, there is, and the facts disclosed therein, there is, as I said, an inquiry ongoing at ICAC. I, the commission of, the, la question de la commission d'enquête ne se pose pas, Monsieur le Président. Prime Minister's question time. You have a question? Following the replies given by the Honorable Minister, it stands to reason that there is collusion and incestuous relationship between the SIT Board of Directors and the Ministry. I might understand okay. that one of the members <laughs> that one of the members appointed by the Minister sitting as a director on the Board of SIT is under investigation by ICAP. And would he tell the House the reason as to why he has not been asked to step down? No, no, I, I, I take exception on the word collusion, Mr. Speaker. Sir, I, must, I might not have heard the exact words used by an honourable member, but collusion certainly is not there between anybody and the Ministry. I think the honourable member hasn't heard me earlier when I explained what is the structure of the SIT and how that board functions. Uh, had you had you had. You, if, if that is the case, then I'm, I'm, indeed, I'm indeed very pleased that you, you know the board structure, so there cannot be, therefore, 
in any way any collusion whatsoever. Now, who is being investigated by ICAC? Which specific aspect? The Honorable Member knows very well these are confidential, covered by Section 81 of the POCA, and I cannot therefore reveal it. Not a question of whether I can reveal or not. I don't even have the confidential information from ICAC. Time over. Prime Minister's question time.